Well, today, hot story on the tip of every investor's tongue was the major sell-off in gold. CNBC's own Josh Lipton joins us now with the details. Good evening, Josh. Major commodity markets falling hard today. Gold breaking below 1500 for the first time since July 2011, entering a bear market. Traders talking about deflation fears. Also reports of Cyprus selling its gold. Capitulation in the GLD, the gold ETF, trading at almost five times its average volume. That, along with margin calls fueling the fire. Miners also taking a hit. Names like Newmont Mining and Barrick Gold, both deep in the red. Now, as for oil, the black gold, all also dropping, falling to a nine-month low. Concern about a weak global demand outlook. U.S. retail sales fell in March. Remember this week, the International Energy Agency also cut its global oil demand growth estimate for this year by 25,000 barrels per day. Larry, back to you. All right, many thanks, CNBC's Josh Lipton. So, what's driving this commodity sell-off? All right, a couple points. First, there is no end of the world, all right? Gold, no end of the world gold trade. Second, there is no end of the dollar gold trade. Third, there's no inflation. Fourth, maybe Cyprus and Egypt and some of the Euro central banks are selling gold. Maybe, we don't know that yet. But how about this thought? A hat tip to my pal Dave Goldman. U.S. energy independence from Saudi Arabia and elsewhere ends our trade deficit over time, boosts king dollar, and winds up crushing gold. All right? Let's bring in Jim Urio, no thing too bad. He's director of TJM Institutional Services. And we have Jared Bernstein, CNBC contributor. All right, Jim Urio, you heard some of my thoughts. What's your take? I like most of your thoughts. I think, and by the way, today this move puzzled a lot of very intelligent people that I talked to today. But by the end of the day, it seemed like the consensus with this, and this is what I believe, is that gold has obviously been trading very, very heavy, both based mainly on the strength in the dollar, probably a lot of it caused by yen. Plus, you know, we're talking about nine years of speculative positions building up. The weakness, selling tends to beget selling. Remember what happened in Apple in fall? They started selling Apple because uh, for tax reasons. But after that happened for a couple months, people who had no interest in selling it for tax reasons were like, wow, my holdings in Apple are going down. I better get in before this gets too painful. We're at that point in gold now. We broke through some old levels, yep. which was about 1525 in the gold, and that brings in a bunch of selling, and that was the velocity of the move. All right, Larry Glazer, we found you. Um, Jared's going to stay with us, too. But Larry Glazer, one reality in this whole story, you got to go back about a year, 18 months. Gold has really been falling quite a while in fits and starts. In round numbers, 1,900 bucks to 1,500 bucks below. One point I want to make is there's no end to the world. There's no end to the United States. There's no end to the U.S. dollar. And if anything, the American stock market rising has knocked gold down. What's your take? of issues that are going to keep me awake this weekend, and the sell-off in gold is not going to be one of them. I mean, when I look, gold is a source of funds right now to fuel other asset classes. It is in redemption. That's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, that's probably a bullish thing. When I look, I see gold, it's a safe haven. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against financial calamity. When it drops, it tells you neither of those is apparent right now. You know, gold, it's an insurance policy, mm. right? And when we look, we want our insurance policy to decline. Clear. We want it to expire. We're Worthless. What worries me is certainly not going to be gold. It's going to be the, the decline in interest rates or the decline in energy that we saw today. It's definitely not going to be the decline in gold, well, which is a bullish indicator going forward. Let me forward. go to Jared, because I think it's interesting, Jared. Mm -hmm. I think a rising economy hurts gold. Right. I think a pretty strong currency hurts gold. I think a low inflation rate hurts gold. I mean, in some sense, I'm going to go to Ben Bernanke. I, I, I don't know about the Obama. You want to argue Obama, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But to some extent, the drop in gold justifies Bernanke's policies at the Fed. I think so. And I think the reasons that you and the others have ticked off really are, are the universe of reasons mm -hmm. why we saw this drop off today. In fact, I'm a little surprised hearing them from you because I always thought you were more of a little gold bugger. And, uh, no, no, I'm a gold back dollar. Yeah. But I hated it when gold so, shot up to nearly 2000 I hated uh, and it. And in your list of reasons, three impressed me the most. One is the world's not coming to it. Right. So the hedge that we were just talking about isn't uh, as important. The inflation situation is what it is, and it doesn't seem uh, much pressure there. And then equities. I mean, you know, right. if, if you're not, if you're in gold as opposed to equities right now, you're kind of getting slammed. Just getting slammed. Jim Uriel, I want to go back to this other argument, which uh, was given to me today by my pal David Goldman. I want to give him the argument. 
we are going to become energy independent in the next 10 years from Saudi Arabia and all the rest. That means a bunch of things, okay? It means our trade deficit goes away, or basically so. It means the dollar keeps strengthening. And without a trade deficit and with a strong king dollar, then gold has to go back down to a more reasonable level. Now, that's a longer run play, but I think that's been kicking in because, you know, this energy independence talk has been around the past year. Well, I love that talk. You and I, you and I both love that talk. And if that happens over the next ten years, that's great. But for me to use that as an explanation of gold sell-off today, I, I don't agree with that at all. And I think as long as we have current administrations in the in the White House that keep fighting different energy sources, I think that's being called into question as well too. But I, in the dollar, the dollar has been getting strong. The dollar, realistically, what's been happening is that the ECB, the Bank of England, the BOJ has been crushing their currency. So mm. of course the dollar looks hugely strong but by comparison because it's the only safe haven. Um, it, when the dollar starts rallying because of things like that, that'll be great, but I don't think that's today. All right, Larry Glazer, what do you do now? What happens now? Let's go to Monday, peer into the future. Does this gold route continue? I mean, guys like John Paulson, very smart hedge fund guys, okay? But he's getting killed right now. What happens Monday? Well, you know, selling does beget selling in some instances. You're going to see margin calls here. You see uh, a whole host of redemptions and liquidations that result from this. What's interesting and where the opportunity here is when you see selling in gold, it also causes selling in other commodities. Some of those commodities are industrial commodities like energy that are actually going to be beneficiaries. The miners, some of the, some of the more cyclical industrial names, they've been left behind in this rally. That's the opportunity in sympathy with the gold sell-off because energy is hope. It's the future. Gold is fear. It's just the let, past. Me, let me just come back on that. There was a story posted up on Market Watch all day long. Yes, the energy commodities have been going down. They're not crashing, yep. by the way. Year to date, no. they're off just a little bit. But other commodities like cotton and orange juice, that stuff is widely traded. They're actually strengthening. So it's a diverse commodity universe. Maybe the gold thing obscures opportunities in these other commodities. Interesting. Interesting. Larry I, you know, again, I, I, think, I think it's the, I think you want to see the industrials and the cyclicals lead the rally. What you don't want, actually, in this market is you don't want food and defensive and consumer staples leading the rally. If you really believe this is going to be sustainable, you want to see those more cyclical areas lead the way. And that cyclic, cyclicality also begins with commodities. I, buy the Larry, broad basket of commodities, I, 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 but don't I, not, buy gold. Not only do I agree with that point, but I think if we began to see gold reverse course in a sharp way, that would actually be a, quite a negative cyclical indicator. I agree with the point that, that what we're seeing today is kind of a, a, an absence of the need for that insurance or yep. fear that the world's yep. collapsing. Well, guys, yep. I got right, something to add, add to put a, to Thank put you, a finer point on that. Jim okay. Urio, Larry Glazer, appreciate it very much. Jared did yeoman's work on <laughs> almost no notice for a stock market discussion. Now, <laughs> folks, does this look like a place where you could walk in and expect to pay with virtual currency Bitcoin? <laughs> well, that's what CNBC set out to find out today. Even as Bitcoin values continue to crash, that story up next.